Lithuania and Ukraine. Who are we and what unites us? Where are our historical roots? And why the project to restore the monument to the Grand Duke of Lithuania, Konstantin Ostrorsky, in the Assumption Cathedral of the Kiev Pechersk Lavra will give Europe motivation to support Ukraine? Watch next in the program. This is probably why the experience that people dream about is gained. This is a very important project in our biography. It's a great blessing that I have a chance to participate in this project. I congratulate this group. This is a very good tandem, and it is very nice when I see that people of two different nationalities are able to find common ground and work together. This project is becoming important for Lithuania, Ukraine and Poland. I think that we should all take care that it is restored as soon as possible. Monuments, architecture, temples, skillful deeds of the past. Why would a modern person restore what existed long ago and was destroyed? One of the Lithuanian philanthropists who has been living in Ukraine for a long time and has studied well the historical context of the monument to the Grand Duke of Lithuania named Konstantin Ostorsky proposed an unexpected perspective in the need to recreate one of the lost historical shrines. I also did not know anything about Konstantin Ostorsky, and if something had been heard, they all said that he was a philanthropist. Well, if you understand this, he was a politician in his heart and soul, after all a hetman that won so many battles. So we must talk about this today in the context of the current situation in Ukraine, as it is quite relevant. He is a Ukrainian, a voivod, a hetman under the Lithuanian king Zygmuntus. He was compared with the strategists of antiquity because he spent 35 battles and lost only two of them. Prince Ostrowski was not only an outstanding military man and statesman, but also a philanthropist who turned his tribal nest, the city of Ostrog, into a European center of Slavic culture. The personality of Konstantin Ostrowski is also closely related with the Kiev Pechersk Lavra. Actually, Konstantin Ostrowski and his son Vasil Konstantin were great philanthropists of the Kiev Pechersk Lavra. Konstantin gave money for the restoration of the iconostasis. He requested that his will and testament be buried precisely in the Cathedral of the Assumption, and he also bequeathed many estates to the Kiev Pechersk Lavra for it to engage in serious, lucrative economic activities. According to his will, Prince Konstantin Ostrowski was buried in the Cathedral of the Assumption. His son, Vasil Konstantin, ordered for his father a luxurious Renaissance monument sculpted of pink marble, which was installed inside the church. The researchers believe that the sculptor was an artist from Lviv named Sebastian Zicek, who studied in Krakow, Poland. And as a monument to the Renaissance culture, a tombstone stood in the Assumption Cathedral of the Kiev Pechersk Lavra for 360 years. All travelers have repeatedly written about the grandeur and beauty of this monument. In the autumn of 1941, this monumental construction, which was one of the main decorations of the shrine, was completely destroyed during the explosion of the Assumption Cathedral. If you look closely, you will see that these are not whole pieces, just fragments. Archaeologists found dozens of such pieces and then glued them like a puzzle, so that later there would be at least authentic remains of the monument to Konstantin Ostrowski. They connect historicity and tell, at the very least, from what material the monument was made. The scientists and sculptors, who are not only Ukrainian but also Lithuanian members of the Academy of Sciences and higher educational institutions of Ukraine and Lithuania, worked for several years on this restoration project. And now we have as a result a model of the gravestone, which will be installed in its historical place. Ukraine and Lithuania have a common history and common cultural heritage, which firmly binds the two countries together. And it should come as no surprise to anyone that the proposal of Lithuanian's cultural figures to reconstruct the tomb of Prince Konstantin Ostrowski was actively supported by experts from both countries. Of course, we are trying to present this project of restoring the monument to Konstantin Ostrowski in the Kiev Pechersk Lavra as widely as possible to the public. Both Lithuania and Ukrainian societies are not sufficiently represented in the pages of our common history. And I think that this project will help to look deeper into our history, to see those things that have connected Lithuania and Ukraine for centuries. 
увидеть те вещи, которые веками связывают Литву и Украину. Константин Островский это был герой. Константин Островский was the hero of that time, and he already supported the idea of a united Europe. I think that this is why the politicians of Lithuania and Ukraine are engaged in this. Mind you, the Poles are also involved in this to some degree. We must say that at last we're paying tribute to those people who created our history almost five centuries ago. Now we just recreate what had been before. That means we have been in Europe, so we again go back there. We had these monuments, we recreate them and those that were destroyed or disappeared. In this way, we remind the world about who we are. We tell what role we played back then, and we remind our neighbors about this historic fact. Working in co-production is popular now not only in cinema and theater, but also in the fine arts. A monument to the Grand Duke Konstantin Ostorsky for the Cathedral of the Assumption will be recreated by sculptors who won the contest. I have already known Arunas for two years and began to work with him. We work in the same way that we did before, cooperated with Boris, and now there are three of us. Over these two years we have already implemented three major projects. I think we have learned each other well. Professor Arunas Sokolowskis of the Vilnius Academy emphasizes that Ukraine and Lithuania are united by common history and their current friendly relations. Of course, when I was offered this in Vilnius, I even doubted it at first. But then, when I started doing the layout here and met the Ukrainian sculptors, I began to believe that this project probably has huge potential for success. I would like it to be a kind of common work. It's not the goal that it be either Ukrainian or Lithuanian. We want to show that there was a time when these two countries were one huge and whole European state. Of course, Oles, Arunas and I will retain our own creative manner. The sculptors started working and made several models of different sizes. The monument itself is more than 8 meters in height and 5 meters in width. Many specialists are involved in the preparations, historians, art critics, heraldists and specialists of historical weapons and military paraphernalia. This monument is still made in the Renaissance style. They are in Italy, the Czech Republic and Poland. Well, even in Lithuania there are such monuments. Of course, here in Kyiv there is probably only one such monument and the most distant European one in some oriental country. Today, in addition to historians, politicians signed a memorandum, which was signed in 2016 here in Ukraine. A parliamentary assembly of the three countries was held, after which the participants' countries signed a memorandum on recommending their governments to support the rebuilding of this monument dedicated to this famous hetman. The large-scale sculptural composition will be installed inside the Assumption Cathedral, in which the tombstone was originally located. Modern technologies for installing similar structures are typical and required only the skills of masters. The whole process will take place in Ukraine. We'll sculpt the composition in our workshop near the Lavra, and then we'll cut it. We have production facilities, where we can place these marble blocks and execute all the necessary works here in Kiev. The monument will be sculpted from marble. The material is expensive, and in addition to the talents of the creators, it requires certain skills in handling. But the team of sculptors has many years of experience. We have extensive experience working with marble and have many similar works in terms of elaborating them and showing their significance. Of course, we're striving to make it both a cultural and historic monument. And to this end, we try to focus on using those materials that were also used in Italy and Poland in the construction of similar monuments. Sculptors are faced with the task of restoring a work of art, an extremely rare example of Ukrainian plastics. This is not so much creative work as historical and scientific work, and its significance for us, as for sculptors, is of course the colossal experience and the huge work from which we hope to receive great satisfaction. Today there are no such monuments in Ukraine. This particular one was once here, and now, when it's recreated, it will be one of the most important monuments of European culture.
Implementation of the project of the restoration of the monument to Konstantin Ostrovsky is both a creative process and a matter of great importance at the state level. This is the foundation on which the national idea is based. Lithuania and Ukraine have a centuries-old common history, and this history is, in fact, European. And that is precisely why we consider it important and necessary to show our European roots through our history, through our common heroes, who have done a lot for our states in due time. And Kostiantina Storsky is one of the most striking historical figures in this process. The Grand Duchy of Lithuania and the land of the Ukrainians, this was a single state. And this monument was erected at that time. To become a part of Europe, you probably have to show your symbols. And this is one of these symbols that indicates you are truly European country. Always, and I believe that this is necessary for the younger generation, both children and adults, so they understand that Ukraine was historically a part of Europe, and also that in Ukraine there were the same monuments and the same or even higher levels of culture than in Europe. Recreating the version of the 16th century that was known only from drawings is not an easy task. To reconstruct the tombstone erected in 1579, the creators had to study dozens of similar monuments all over the European continent. Seeing as there were a lot of flags that could not be in this monument at that time, there were Russian flags. There was an intervention and nobody knows when, but it happened. There were flags inserted in it that were in somebody's personal interests. When we started this kind of work, we understood what we were undertaking. In addition to the fact that there is a photograph, in Europe there are many specimens of monuments that were made around this time towards which we were mainly oriented. We have been working together for 20 years, and we already had accomplished some previous work when we had to dig up historical information and search for materials. So in this regard, this is not new for us. A model of the gravestone of the great hetman of Lithuania is presented at the exhibition Princess of Austria, European Dimension of Ukrainian History. These sculptors have been working for a long time. Actually, in order to recreate such a masterpiece, one must have in-depth knowledge of entire historic era. And the study of all these exhibits helps the sculptors to restore this monument to its full scale and significance. The project is to be completed by 2019, when the 505th anniversary of Prince Ostrovsky's most famous victory will be celebrated. For each of the sculptors, this project is a great challenge, and they may not have a second chance to do something of this scale. We do not defend our ambitions. First and foremost, we want to prove ourselves as artists. Perhaps such experience is accumulated because this is what dream about. Such is our job. I think every sculptor has a dream to touch the Renaissance year, to do something so beautiful and very masterfully, creatively and special to their hearts and souls. White marble will glow brightly here in this church, and I sincerely hope that very many people will come for an excursion to admire this magnificent work, because I'm convinced everything will be beautiful here. Anyway, if you rebuilt it in the way that we see today on the model, and from natural marble, this fantastic sculptor will not only be a monument, but an incredible masterpiece of the ages. All these aspects are combined in one whole – culture, ideology and, of course, emotions. This is an emotion of the restoration of justice to the point that this cultural monument, a monument of art and a monument of our common history can speak of. Five centuries have passed since the times when Prince Ostrovsky lived, but his personality and his deeds are extremely important for the people living in the 21st century.